Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they say yes. Actually, I meant this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now the next thing I need to do is I need to have you turn off your mic. And if you need me, then just chat me, okay? But we're going to proceed now. So let's, you can hear me okay, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so what I need you to do is go to your mic and mute it. <clears throat> can you still hear me? No. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, good. All right. Uh, we're recording, and that's okay with you folks, right? Yes. 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 Um, I'm double clicking, and so that you can see that uh, what I'm going, I plan to do is every ten minutes we'll stop, and then at the end of the hearing tonight we'll put this up on um, the arbitration website, so that any of the students that want to can go back and look at this. I also want you to remember that this is not a real arbitration. The point of this is to learn, not to persecute yourself. So um, while I want you to be serious about it, I also want you to realize that um, this isn't the real thing. All right? Okay, let's proceed. The first thing I would like to do is I'd like to see your uh, evidence book. And you have two separate evidence books? Yes. Okay, these are case books. You don't have uh, a separate evidence book? I do. Okay. So these are the books, that, the case books are the books I've already seen, and they have the list of exhibits. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, so this is the evidence book here. I'm going to give you your arbitration case books back. Okay, thank you. My name is Arbitrator Swift, and if you could, if you go around the room and tell me who you are. Okay, I'm Jesse Alstoff. Okay. Brittany Garza. Lindsay Renshaw. Raleigh Briona. Now all of you uh, to my left, who do you represent? Management. You represent management yeah. in this case, Okay. And I'm Adam Eckel. Stephanie Ewart. William Cook. And you represent the employee in the union, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Now, I see before me the first document is, uh, it looks to me to be Section 8B of the Act. Is that of the National Labor Relations Act? Correct. You understand that I don't have any authority over the Act. My authority is over only the contract. Correct. And I'm not a member of the National Labor Relations Board. So I can't interpret the National Labor Relations Act. The National Labor Relations Act, but that's done by the National Labor Relations Board. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, good. good. My power comes from where? Contract. From the contract. That's true. Okay, I see here it looks to me as, um, and I'm going to just mark this as Exhibit 1. That's okay. If I had a pen I could use that was appropriate. Okay, exhibit number 1. I'm going to look next at, it looks to me like your contract section from the CBA, is that true? Correct. Right. Section 12, 15, uh, and 13. I'll put that as Exhibit 2. Since these are, this is a document that's agreed to by both of you, I'm correct? Sure. Both sure. sides? All right. The Shaw decision, um, who put the Shaw decision in? We, the union. Okay, the union did, and so, and I've read that decision, so I'm going to put that as ex union exhibit number one. Okay. And I see here the expected testimony, but that, I assume, is going to be coming through on the basis of witnesses. Is that correct? Correct. All right. So then I'll wait for that. I won't I accept this as evidence. I'll wait to hear that evidence from the mouth of the uh, witnesses. Okay? The first thing I'd like to do is hear your opening statement. I'd like you to speak slowly to the cameras, and I'd also like to make sure that when you're speaking that uh, it's brief, but that you explain the case to me. Okay. So I let the employer in termination cases go first because of the fact that I think that they have the evidence as to why the person was terminated. Um, and I believe under your contract that this is a just cause case. Is that true? Sure. So you know there are two things that um, you have to establish. One is substantive due process and the other is procedural due process. I just want to ask before we get started, are there any procedures that you're going to argue have not been followed? Yes. Yeah. Are they procedures under the contract? We'd like to argue that, um, yes, that management um, by section um, six of discipline says that. Um, Before you go too far, I guess I didn't explain myself well enough. Are there any proced grievance procedures that have not been filed appropriately? No. Management review? No. Okay, good. 
Um, so uh, this case will be primarily a substantive case in which you're showing uh, the employer has a duty of showing a burden of proof of rule violation and fair discipline. Correct? Correct. Are there any issues of arbitrability? No. Okay, very good. Okay, I would like the employer to go first with their um, opening statement. If you could introduce yourself again and if you would talk to see that. My name is Lindsay Renshaw and I'm on the management side of the case. Excuse me. What I need you to know is that you're near a mic, so when you're rustling around with papers, they can hear that. Thank you. We are here today to discuss a discrepancy of our changes requested by management on October 28, 2013. Sandy Alper, who is the representative of the union, on behalf of Jose Garcia for his grievance with the hours and issues of voluntary termination. Jesse Ossoff will be re representing the management in the rebuttal of his grievance that they that he did not show up for work when it was mandatory in the mandatory overtime. Okay, so your argument is that he's been terminated because he didn't show up for work. He voluntarily terminated because he did not show up for work after his mandatory overtime was told to him. Okay, and let me ask you this. As far as when is it in your contract that somebody voluntarily um, terminates themselves or that they resign? Um, it's in the contract that they must... Um, do overtime, so okay, that so it's required for them if they're asked to do it, that they must okay, abide by that. So they're required to do all overtime or reasonable overtime? Reasonable or? overtime as requested. Okay, reasonable <coughs> overtime as requested. Okay, thank you. And that's your opening statement? Thank you. Can I have an opening statement now from the union, or do you wish to wait until you go forward? Adam will give our opening statement now. Thank you. <coughs> if you can introduce yourself again for the record. Yeah, I'm Adam Echo, um, and I represent the union. Um, we, the service employee union, request that Jose Garcia be restored to his position with full back pay, benefits, and seniority. Also, we request that Mr. Garcia be exempt from working the new schedule until the issue is bargained over, based on the following. Uh, first... The Flowers for Smiles committed an unfair labor practice by refusing to bargain the mandatory overtime and change of schedule, referred to Section 12 of the contract. Second, Section 15 of the contract refers to a reasonable amount of overtime. What does this mean? Is it reasonable to force someone to work 10 hours of overtime a week? We think not. No overtime notice was provided to the union steward. Um, third, the employee was not terminated with just cause. Section 6 clearly states that discipline will be corrective in nature and no employee will be discharged without receiving a warning from Ms. Uh, Mr. Garcia, never received a warning, nor did he commit an offense that justified an immediate discharge. Fourth, the employer states that Mr. Garcia voluntary, voluntarily quit after refusing to work his mandated overtime. However, on October 28th, Mr. Garcia clearly expressed his intent to keep his job by informing his supervisor that he had filed a grievance regarding the mandatory overtime, and until it was heard, he was going to work his regular schedule. It is clear that Mr. Garcia had no intention to quit his position. Thank you very much. And management I, is free to go forward with a first witness. Your first witness. Um, we would like to call our first witness as Mary Smith. And is Mary Snips outside? Yes, she is. Would you be able to hear her? Yes. We'll be doing the direct exam. I will. Okay. Can you introduce yourself again for me? Uh, my name is Morale Gibrionis, and I'm on the management side. Okay. Um, and the witness's name? Mary Snips. Mary Snips. Would you like the witness uh, sworn? Yes, please. Thank you. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Okay. Um, first, I'd just like to ask you some basic questions. Um, so first off, um, when, um, when did you employ Jesse? 
Um, Can I ask you first to introduce her by, um, I'll just show you a few things. Oh, sure. Can you state your name for the record? Mary Smith. And where do you work? We work, I work for, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. For the employer? The employer. Okay. How long have you worked for the employer? Um, I've worked there for 10 years. Okay, you worked there for 10 years? Yeah. And, uh, what's your position with the employer? I'm a manager. And you manage the grievance? Okay, you may proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, just some quick basic questions. Um, were you the one who employed Jesse? Did you have um, a part in the process of hiring him on? Yes, I did. Um, and how long has he been working? He has been working there for three years. Three years, okay. Okay, great. And how is his work ethic? Have you had any problems with him before? Um, at any any disciplinary problems or he uh, has been not our best employee, but definitely not our worst employee overall. Good work mm-hmm. for up until a couple weeks ago, probably. Okay. And how would you describe his attitude normally on a on a daily basis? Good attitude, no complaints from other employees. Okay. That's what we like. Um, now, um, some questions pertaining directly to the case. Were you under the impression that um, Mr. Garcia would not be attending work again, given his comment about keeping his other job? I was not under the impression that he would not be continuing work for us. Okay. No. So this was a complete surprise to you? Um, well, I know he had brought up once prior or mentioned it briefly that he needed to do get another job, but I didn't know how it would affect his position here until the day of the grievance. Okay. Um, now, we covered earlier that overtime is required for employees if they are asked to work it. Did you emphasize this to Mr. Garcia, that the required overtime was absolutely mandatory? We've held employee meetings. This has been our policy for years. It's not like this is the first year this has happened. We have a busy season. We require overtime often. Um, how sufficient is Mr. Garcia's job to carrying out daily operations and running production efficiently? How sufficient? Like how well does he do his job? Basically. To our standards. Okay, so standards. meet standards. Okay. Yep. Now, on Monday, October 28th, when Mr. Garcia told you that he would still be keeping his other job at Hillside, what was your response? Um, that he would be, when he said he'd keep his other job, mm-hmm. I was fine with him keeping his other job as long as it didn't interfere with our, his position with our company. I mean, we have no policy against, uh, having more than one job and that's never come into effect unless it affects your work at our company, which is written in our agreements and employee contracts anyway. Okay. Did you have any information on how long he had been working his other job? No. Okay. Or anything about the hours that it's he worked? It's more of a personal decision. So, you know, as a company, we don't want to get involved in everyone's personal life. Um, now, did you take Mr. Garcia's decision to work his other job to be his voluntary resignation? Yes. Yeah. You did? Okay. He that was is- choosing not to work for our company, so... Those are all the questions that I have from you. Okay, I'm going to stop for just a minute so that we can um, stop the recording and then we'll start again. Okay, Mallory?